am a big fan of the relationship dynamic. That is scary powerful lady falls in love with total himbo because he's too dumb to be intimidated by her but drinks enough respect women juice on the regular to be very impressed by and genuinely supportive of everything she does. 2020 is here, but you realize that 1720, 1820 and 1920 had a massive plague outbreaks. That's history right there, you understand? Me I roll. Well, that explains parents not wanting to vaccinate their kids. Isn't it creepy that from the day you are born you start to die? Actually. Fun fact. If starting to die is defined as cells start dying at a faster rate than they are replaced, then you don't start dying the day you're born. You're still growing and cells are still being replaced pretty quick for about 22 to 25 years. So 25. That's when you start to die. Ask any 25 year old and they will confirm. Our daughter is texting a boy. I hate family vloggers so much. Imagine having this little respect for your adolescent kids privacy and personal life. Freeloaders don't deserve privacy. Do you know what children are? They don't have jobs, nor do they pay for rent, utilities, or food. That's the textbook definition of a freeloader. No, it's the textbook definition of children. Why isn't this 3 year old paying rent? F***ing freeloader, I don't know why I keep you around. Change does not come from a place of comfort. I find pennies and nickels in my couch all the time, so I don't know what you are talking about. What kind of power move could I make towards my new therapist? Takes a notepad and takes notes. Whenever they take notes, eats the paper at the end of the session. This is why you're lar in therapy. Why everybody be trying to act like they didn't have a twilight phase. You either had a twilight phase or you had an anti-twilight phase. And in either case you invested emotion in twilight, your twilight phase. When a network cancels a TV show. They should be required to give them a season's notice, so the writers can tie up loose plot threads, and people who work on the show, can find other work, instead of just suddenly cancelling shows between seasons. In this essay I will. OP. Where's the essay? The network cancelled it without a season's notice. Hi. Could I ask, how exactly does one accidentally set a lemon on fire? Microwave for 40 minutes. Why were you microwaving a lemon? I read boiling lemons helps cover up bad smells. I wanted to cover up the scent of burnt oranges, but I didn't own any pots. Did you burn an orange too? How? Microwave for 40 minutes. Any story claiming to be a deconstruction of fairy tales, but has nothing to offer, except new types of violence, more explicit six, and a general attitude of lol. Happy endings aren't real is like, such a cultural waste of time to be honest. Know what actually is a good deconstruction of a fairy tale? Shrek. It f's up just about everything in a normal fairy tale, and still manages to have a happy ending with a good message, and never once has to be gritty or dark. It's actually really well done. The trouble is that we have a bad habit, encouraged by pedants and sophisticates, of considering happiness as something rather stupid. Only pain is intellectual, only evil interesting. This is the treason of the artist, a refusal to admit the banality of evil and the terrible boredom of pain. Ursula Legin, the ones who walk away from Omelus. In dark times such as these, it is absolutely revolutionary to be happy. Admit it. You all think robots are just machines, built by humans to make their lives easier. Well, aren't they? I've never made anyone's life easier, and you know it. I'm the robot. Again, this is even funnier if you know what a f***ing production nightmare, with a possible curse attached to it no less. This robot prop was for the Doctor Who crew. I want to know about the cursed robot. So the robot isn't a guy in a suit, it's an animatronic slash puppet thing, and it wasn't built for the show. In fact, no one knows who built it. One of the producers just found it one day in a building near the studio. It had apparently been built for another production that was cancelled and then just left to gather dust. 
So they thought, oh cool, let's make this dumb robot the doctor's new companion. It'll look neat and weird. Everyone will have a gas with it. Nope. Chameleon was incredibly complicated to operate, so they assigned a guy named Mike Powers to figure out the best way to go about it. Apparently, he did a great job streamlining Chameleon's operation, and then he promptly died in a boating accident, which is where the curse idea comes from. He didn't leave any notes or instructions, and the show was already behind schedule, so they had to rush Chameleon scenes into production with no idea how it worked. It was a gigantic pain in the ass to use, took forever to set up, and needed constant upkeep and repairs. Everyone hated working with the prop, to the point that before Chameleon's first episode even aired, they had already decided to kill him off later in the same season. Peter Davison, who played the fifth doctor, had the most scenes with Chameleon, and absolutely hated it. When Chameleon dies, the doctor is really sad, but Davison said later that it was one of the best acting jobs of his career, because in reality, he was absolutely giddy with joy at being rid of the thing. TL. Drive. In the 8 is a mystery robot prop, built by unknown hands, caused chaos on the Doctor Who set. Finding an abandoned mystery robot and bringing it home, leading to death, is the most Doctor Who plot I've ever heard. I wish there was a way to tell companies that I dislike an ad so much that I will actively avoid buying anything from them because of it. So slightly unrelated, but still relevant, generally when I come across an ad that just really f***ing annoys me for whatever reason, I'll go into Google and just type different variations of I hate X product like 5 times until Google's algorithm picks it up and I never see an ad for that product again. It's amazing. The tables have turned. Capitalist spy complex. My crystal ball says you really f***ed up this time. Rolling one on a divination check. Health insurance is a mental health issue. I can't help a client who can't afford to see me. Housing is a mental health issue. I can't use therapy to help a client whose depression and anxiety come directly from sleeping in the streets. Food insecurity is a mental health issue. I can't help a client who isn't taking their medication because their pills say take with food and they have nothing to eat. Healthcare is a mental health issue. I can't help a client whose depression is actually a thyroid condition. They can't afford to get treated. Wages are a mental health issue. I can't help a client whose anxiety comes from the fact that they are one missed shift away from not being able to make rent. Child care is a mental health issue. I can't help a client who works 80 hours per week to afford daycare and doesn't have the time or energy left to come see me. Drug policing is a mental health issue. I can't help a client who ended up in prison because they got caught self-medicating with illegal substances. Police brutality is a mental health issue. I can't help a client whose anxiety is a very real and justified fear of ending up as a hashtag. If you're going to make a stand for improving mental health, you have to understand that addressing mental health goes way beyond hiring more therapists and talking about mental health on social media. If we are really serious about tackling this mental health problem as a country, it means rolling up our sleeves and taking down the barriers that prevent people from getting the help they need, even if those people are different than us, lead different lives, and make choices we don't agree with. We aren't fixing mental health unless we are fixing it for everybody. All of science fiction. Human beings will resent Orion robots and will never trust them. Real human beings. I had to apologize to my room before stepping on him today. I felt so bad. He cleaned my whole house and I just stomped on him. Sophie 2019. Elite police officers are trained to hunt down robots that are forbidden from returning to earth. They call it retirement as a euphemism. Real 2019. The entire internet mourns a beloved Mars rover that gave a haunting final message as its 15 year life came to an end. Your bed is probably as happy to see you as you are to see it. Here comes the warmth slab, it thinks. Wrong, it thinks. God, hope this dipsh doesn't spill beans all over me again. Who the f eats beans in bed? Stop reblogging this, new year new me, I haven't spilled beans in bed once this year. Uh oh. 
Tool, the unconfirmed record for fastest moving man-made object is a manhole cover propelled by a nuclear detonation. A high-speed camera trained on the lid caught only one frame of it moving upward before it vanished, which means it was moving about 125,000 miles per hour. I'm reblogging myself because I read the source. The lead scientist involved theorized that it was going fast enough that a. It would not have burnt up in our atmosphere, and b. It would not have been caught in Earth's orbit. Essentially meaning, the first man-made object launched into space was a manhole cover that's still traveling the cosmic abyss. Yeet. Earth escape velocity is just under 7000 miles per hour. This was traveling almost 18 times that speed. That thing is definitely out in space. And not just in orbit about Earth either, it's f***ing gone. Gone. Wait, I did more research. From the Earth's surface, the escape velocity from the entire f***ing solar system is under 30,000 miles per hour. About one quarter of the speed, that thing was going. I can't believe the first and fastest interstellar message we sent was the equivalent of squeezing the lid off a Pringles tube at your friend. See you, space cowboy. The level of absurdity equal to that of a Dow Glass Adams novel. Aliens declare war on Earth after a manhole cover punches a f***ing hole in their planet. I was in a restaurant earlier and I heard someone a few tables over yell, give me shrimp or give me death, and the person next to them just casually said, Layla, with your seafood allergy, I'm pretty sure you can have both. People who leave their phone set to military time are f***ing war criminals. How do you look at 1605 and go, wow, I can understand that. F***ing bootlickers, what's next? You gonna go join the army? Recruit me? Americans be like, okay, I can't count past 12 actually. So my roommate, girl, bought this vodka, and me, guy, and my other roommate, guy, poured a glass, and have just been staring at it for a good 10 minutes. I don't know, what is this glitter f curry? I don't wanna drink it. Why are colds like? One nostril. I'm cool. Other nostril. They have taken the bridge and the second hall. We have barred the gates, but cannot hold them for long. The ground shakes. Drums. Drums in the deep. We cannot get out. A shadow lurks in the dark. We cannot get out. They are coming. Whoever f***ing put that Pokemon in here, just know I reblogged it and scrolled past this four times before I noticed it. F you. I can't wait to go to Italy this summer so I can meet the Pope and propose some new ideas. 1. Baptism water park. 2. Everybody gets a glass of wine instead of a sip. 3. Extreme confessions, where you confess your sins and then have to battle with one of the priests in order to be forgiven. 4. Buff Jesus. 5. Every choir song is replaced with smooth by Carlos Santana. 6. A 15 minute period where we try to summon Satan in order to defeat him once and for all. They used coding and algorithms so the drones didn't crash into each other. If going to crash into each other, don't. As a robotics major, I can confirm this is 100% how coding works.